Okay, so let's go ahead and get ourselves set up with a live event through YouTube. Now, uh, if you have a new YouTube account and you haven't done any kind of live streaming before, obviously you're gonna need to do all the permissions that you would normally do. It will be over here somewhere in the settings or underneath there, I, I believe it's settings. But you're gonna go into the top right-hand corner, hit create, and you're gonna hit go live. Now, in the event that it doesn't pop up into this area, sometimes it just goes right into stream. You're just gonna go ahead and hit this little calendar thing so that way you can schedule the stream. Hit schedule and I'm gonna create new see it's gonna pop up and auto populate based on a previous broadcast I've done that's fine so let's just go ahead and we're just gonna put in the title of our thing we'll put our description if you're using streaming software great if you're using webcam mobile obviously tick that off so I use streaming software with OBS uh, open broadcasting software fantastic by the way set your category and the next thing you're gonna do is upload your thumbnail you could choose a playlist that you want it to dump into we're going to show more if it's got paid promotion tick that off if you're not using ai hit no drop your tags into there and the rest you can kind of scroll through and feel like looking through it go ahead next for monetization whether or not you have this you can turn it on or off now personally i would rather be in control of the mid-roll ads and when i'm going live i'm not trying to inconvenience my live viewers with a bunch of mid-roll ads so you could schedule mid-roll ads at a set frequency if you want to me i'd rather just insert it manually so typically it will just come after the broadcast when they'll go ahead and put the mid-roll ads into there we're going to hit next I always turn on live chat replay because it does provide context when I'm starting to interact with the live viewers. So that way, if someone's watching this on the replay, they can be able to see the live chat. I love having live reactions. Fantastic. Slow mode. Leave it go. Now, this is not going to appear in every single account. If you haven't streamed before, chances are likely you're not going to see the redirect or trailer. For redirect, you would need permission to a particular channel if you want to redirect to another um, uh, channel or a broadcaster. So you want to reach out to that YouTuber and say, Hey, could I get permission? You'd give the channel name of yours, or you can redirect it to another video inside yours. So we're just going to go ahead and redirect it there. Also, you can add a trailer. Now here's the tip that I would recommend is for a trailer, get something like a minute to, to no more than two minutes long, providing some context. It's a great way to help hype your event that you're going to be doing. So I'll upload a video with a thumbnail and also get it to where it is unlisted. I don't want to have it public because then people are going to watch it and be like, what's going on here? So I'll select this. So anytime someone visits the page before the event, this trailer is going to play automatically. I'll show it here shortly. So we're going to hit next and private. Obviously no one's going to see it unlisted. If they have the link, they're going to see it for members only. If you've got a channel memberships, only the members are going to see it. And for public, it's going to provide it there. Now, because I'm just using this as an example, I'm just going to hit unlisted. We're going to select a date and then our time that we're going to go live. Now, if you don't go live at that time, or if you go a little early, it's not a big deal. I think Facebook has always been kind of weird like that, where if you have something scheduled for like six o'clock, you got to be there 20 minutes in advance and scratch your head, rub your belly. No, it, for this, like you could literally show up like an hour late if you wanted to. It's going to provide a countdown. And so in the event that it hits that countdown and it goes to six o'clock PM and that's your start time, it's going to say waiting for broadcaster or something like that. Uh, we're going to hit done now that we're all set. So it's going to create this page for us. All right. So we've created this now. You can see this, this duplicate error it's not going to happen to you if you've never streamed before but you can always create a new stream key or choose from one of your previous ones so look, looks like we're good it's telling me to insert ads no i'm good to go all right the next settings you're going to want to look at is enable auto start and then enable auto stop. See, I use that because I use open broadcasting software, OBS, to uh, stream. And so when I stop there, I want it to stop over there. And when I start, I want it to automatically start. Because otherwise, if you don't have these things enabled, it's one extra step that you're gonna have to do. Closed captions are nice. It's not perfect, but it is good. But it's only available for normal latency. If you're doing a live event where you're wanting to interact with the viewers in real time, you're going to want to select low latency. Or if you really, really want real time, go ultra low latency. Now, keep in mind that as soon as you go to ultra low latency, that you can't be streaming in like 4K 60 frames per second uh, and then dropping a bunch of packets like, uh, like up to like, I don't know, 6,000 gigabits per second. Uh, that's just a random number off the top of my head. 
I usually just go low latency because then I can stream at the quality I want to and then it just sacrifices the closed captions, which is totally fine. Let's go back into edit real fast and then in the event that you need to correct anything, you can pop into here. You can change the time, you can change the listing, you can do the customization as well, change the redirect if you want to. You can change the, the thing here and monetization, of course, it's just a repeat right here. Now to see the actual page, what we're going to do is we're going to left click on the share, boom. And if we open up another browser and then drop this on in here, it's going to take us over to the page here and it should start the trailer. So you can see that it pops it up here and it's great. It's good to go. This is a great way for it to hype up the event. And usually if I was signed in, it would actually have like a bell icon right here in the video pane that people can tick. So that way they don't miss the live event. Uh, so that is pretty much everything I can think of right at the top of my head. And one of the things I would also recommend is before you do go live, if there's some pertinent information, make sure that you comment it over here. All right, and then you're gonna pin the post and you just left click on there, pin the message, and then it'll pop up here. So that way when someone pops in and you've got a link that you wanna promote or you want to bring something to their attention, like, hey, if you got any questions, please visit blah, blah, blah. So uh, that is how you do that. Um, so I believe that is really just about it. In the event that you don't want the live replay to everybody, what you could always do is hit unlist and it will remove it from everybody's notifications. Now, if somebody's already been notified and they have that, that link to it, it will send it over there. So in that event, you would need to go into the replay video and put it over to private if you don't want people to see it. Now, in most instances, I just leave that one go unless I'm doing multi-streaming on two YouTube channels about the same topic. And then at that point, so for instance, if I'm streaming on my main channel and I want people to watch the videos over there, I'd hit unlisted on this one. So that pretty much covers everything. As far as setting it up, uh, it's going to work with just about like anything else that we've done with you know open broadcasting software, everything else like that, you would end up copying the key, put it into your... Um, your broadcasting software, and of course you get the stream URL and all that stuff. So hopefully this helps you out. If you've got any kind of questions, please do hit me up.